Welcome back to Mega Music TV. My guest is Gwyn Ashton, an Adelaide prodigy. He's been everywhere, man. Where have you not been? Gwyn, can you name one place on this earth? Um, Jupiter. Oh, that's not quite on this earth. <laughs> um, there are plenty of places I haven't been, uh, mainly around Europe and Russia and the Balkans and, and Australia, of course. Now, was it true that a guitar was thrown in your crib and that's where it all started? No, no, no. <laughs> When did it start I, for you? I had to work for it. Uh, about 1972, I started playing guitar mm -hmm. and uh, started playing in Adelaide professionally around 76 and uh, it sort of all skyrocketed from there. Now, I know you musicians hate this, but, you know, we have to put labels on people sometimes because if you don't know them, you need a label to maybe entice you to over to see them but if you were going to put a label on yourself which you probably don't want to do what sort of label would you put on yourself Gwyn? um roots blues songwriter guitarist I, I i i cross a lot of genres in in my recordings and the shows that i do so it's it's really hard the the, the blues is at the roots of everything that i do but it goes into a lot of other things as well and you're a boogeyman too uh, a little bit. Boo. <laughs> <laughs> but you cover you cover all techniques. I mean, this guy's a brilliant guitar player, but, you know, I mean, you can be a brilliant guitar player, you could be a plucker, or you could be a fantastic rhythm guitarist with incredible strumming techniques, or you could play a, a steel, steel pedal, steel guitar, but this guy nearly does everything you can imagine on guitar. Um, how long did it take you to master some of those fantastic things, like, you know, slide and working with a dobro and things like that? Well, I mean, I've never mastered it. Really, I just do it. You know, it ta you, you just got to keep playing and don't give up. That you, you have to have a, a little bit of focus and you have to have goals, lots of different goals, and try to achieve each one consecutively. Uh, you can't just go for the big time and burn out by not doing it. And I certainly haven't done that yet. But there are a litany of large names associated with you that you've met on your travels you've either worked with or they've worked back with you or whatever do you want to just rattle off a few that guys that you've collaborated with or had dealings with over the years that people may know well i've i've done a lot of shows around europe um i, I guess the biggest thing i did was was status quo i toured with them for 15 nights um, did all the arenas around Britain. That was 20 years ago. See, I this told, you he's, told you he's a boogeyman. This month, <laughs> this month yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've done shows with B.B. King, Ray Charles, uh, Van Morrison, Buddy Guy, Mick Taylor, Peter Green, Robin Trower, many, many people. And if you were collaborated with yeah, yeah. On, on record. Yeah. Um, with, I guess my first collaboration was... 20 years ago again with Jerry McAvoy, Brendan O'Neill, who played with Rory Gallagher, one of my heroes yep. from, from a long yep. time ago. Yep. And uh, Don Airy, who, who plays with Deep Purple now, he was with Rainbow, White Snake, and Black Sabbath and, and whatnot. He's, he's on two of my albums. And Chris Glenn, Ted McKenna, Alex Harvey Band. That they're on one record. Sonic Blues Preachers is with John Freeman. I recorded that here in Adelaide. Just happened to have it <laughs> on hand. How much of a coincidence okay. is that? Yeah. And JF played with uh, yeah. with Bon Scott with Fraternity yeah. back in 1970 here yeah. in Adelaide. So, uh, How many tracks? I don't know. And uh, uh, where, where, uh, all, all originals? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, nine songs. Yeah. I collaborated with my... Songwriting partner Gary Allen, who's in Melbourne, he's from Adelaide as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah, we co-wrote all these songs together. Now you mentioned Europe. Europe's home for you these days. Yeah, pretty much. Mm. Mm. Yeah. How often do you get back? Um, here, mm. I try to get back every year for for a few months to avoid all the snow and crap. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I really don't like cold yeah. weather. It was the, the Richie <laughs> Benno way of living. Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, hadn't no. seen a winter in thirty years. <laughs> we're, we're touching tangible, uh, you know, CDs mm. uh, as we speak. Um, you can get these online as well. Yeah, 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 and at all my gigs as well. More importantly, at your <laughs> gigs, don't go to a store to buy this. Go to a gig. So 
Imagine on the other side of the camera, there's a, a young, young fellow or a young lass who's uh, got a guitar um, and thinking to themselves, well, give up. <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't take it to heart. What's your first tip for someone who's maybe picking up a guitar for the first time? What's, what's the process and, what, and what's, what's your, what are your words of encouragement for them? I'd say keep an open mind, listen to everything. And if you're playing with other people, listen to exactly what everybody else is playing. Um, on stage, don't don't try to push any 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 harder than everybody else is pushing. Basically, play as a team if you're playing with other people, mm -hmm. and always always listen, always listen to what's going on. Because the less you play, the better everybody sounds. Correct. Less is more sometimes. Yeah. Now you were uh, hanging about with uh, a well-known Adelaide identity, uh, Mr. John Vincent, back in the day, ba back before his passing, and uh, you actually uh, performed with John in London, I do believe. Uh, yeah, but I can't, I can't remember it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I remember him coming over. I remember doing something, 
Well, it was a pub. But it was 14 years ago or something. It was a pub. 15, 16 years ago. (laughs) You are forgiven. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I remember he was crazy and he he was a great guy. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic man. Part of history, wasn't he? Absolutely. And so were you. Uh, Gwen Ashton. Maybe. Guitarist extraordinaire. (laughs) You're going to perform for us. I am. Do you want to nick over there and get yourself ready? Yeah, I have to to find a guitar first. All right. Move on over. Gwen Ashton is going to uh, disappear and... uh, get over to his guitar and play us a tune pretty soon. This is going to be fun because I've got Rob Spencer here and seriously it pains me to even call him by his name because I've known this man for 35 years and to me I was you you will always be Pigsy. How are you Pigsy? I'm well. Chens? <laughs> That's what, see? That's what we're going. We're, we're we're, look, let's stick with, let's be comfortable. Yes sir. Mate, you know, we've worked together. We've written songs together. Man, that was a great period. Oh, the studio. That's some, that's some amazing times. We've had some great musical experiences and live performances. So I know uh, the quality of songwriter you are. I've always been very melodic and rhythmic. And uh, I've been watching you. Do You are so busy, man. You are working all the time and you, you keep uh, – Oh, it's not so much reinventing yourself, but you keep doing new projects, uh, stimulating, uh, stimulating, and inspir- inspiring yourself. I mean, full frontal lobotomy, and then you can sing like a an Irish tenor, Oh Danny Boy. What the hell's going on with you, man? I've got to keep myself interested in myself because you know I think about other people finding me interesting after. Yeah, I've got I've got to find it. Um, is combative a good word? Probably not in an angry sense, but something that I can dig and I, I, I like. And yes, yeah, some days I'll wake up and it'll be blah, 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 and the next day I'll go. Oh. You know? <laughs> but man, but you know the thing is, uh, you always achieve the uh, that authenticity of that genre. 
what you're doing, and that's your the way your brain's wired. I think it's because I actually do like like the the, the metal genre has, has been a you know weakness of mine since I was a young man. Um, then going down the Irish road with the banjos and the mandolins. Um, oh, oh, that's yeah, right, the, the thieves. Yeah, the thieves. Yes. Are, yeah, we did our first show um, opening up for you guys back. Wow, that's like t- ten years ago. Well, uh, as it is, two thousand ten or eleven. Wow. Yes, but a long time ago. But anyway, uh, I just wanted to give a little bit of an insight into the depth of your musical ability. Because now you're, this is strange, because you're doing a, you've got a, uh, it's an alter ego? It's uh, a, just a, a different side of me so that you, I've discovered. It's a character that you've call, you're calling Roger X. And Roger X is, uh, so the music is like, uh, the, the musical side of it is R&B, melodic, bluesy, soulful, but then... You rap. I'm doing a, a yeah, something I something I never thought I'd do. But the the rap is a la Australiana. Yes, yes. So I'm uh, trying to make it an Australian sound while having an R and B um, chorus. Just the melodies coming out. I can't. I've just never been able to do music without whether it's metal or or, or rap. It's it's got to have some melody in a chorus. I can't, just just a hook, a catch. You know. That's you. See, that's you. Because you've got to have that melody. But even when we're doing really full-on uh, hard rock stuff, your songwriting all ha- always had these beautiful melody lines over it, which kept, which I liked. I'm a hook. I'm, I'm an '80s head, so I'm, I'm a hook nut. It's got to have hooks every everywhere. Roger X, this is heavy stuff, man. Because what you're doing is you've got a persona, which isn't you, but the music. Is very autobiographical, and it talks about some pretty painful experiences, and also a life that was stolen uh, uh, from you, and also abuse, mental abuse. And uh, man, uh, how do you even start? I think it's by by separating. And, and seeing it as a project and an alter ego, I can sit from the outside and look at what's going on, what I'm writing. Um, like I said, it's, it's autobiographical on my life and things that have happened around me, but I can still remove myself enough to go, okay, now what's going on in this song? Oh, yeah, you know, uh, and of course I do edit some stuff out. You know, wow. it, 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 you know show, showing the soul too much can, you know, it's it's good to get it off my chest. Like it's been a long time to to get these these actions and things that I've grown up around and um, out. But there's still some stuff you sort of hold back and go, yeah, the world doesn't need to know that. I don't, don't just sound too much like an, an idle back rap, you know. The thing is that the listener and people listening to that it could be pretty healing for them. I think it's 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 a common thing of, um, you know, broken homes and teenage mothers and uh, you know, brought up by grandparents and some of the things that I went through. Look, my grandparents were the most loving people in the world, but just being told about, you know, family members, why they're not around and little little lies that I guess people think they're protecting children. They're not but, little lies. No, exactly. And as an adult, you start going, oh, so he's not dead. Oh, so there are brothers and sisters. Ah. Oh, Oh, so there's an extended family that, you know, so I thought, well, I'm gonna, I need to put into a song. Um, th- and this is the beautiful thing about music. It's something very serious and we can't trivialise it, but uh, the journey uh, and that you've gone through and you've put it into music, for somebody else it can be a completely different topic, a subject, circumstance, but they will relate to that emotion and in some way it makes them feel not alone. And here you are, smiling, proud uh, and uh, inspired and you're going to go out and do it and and this is a good message to put out there. And, you know, at the end of the day, all we're doing is playing music, but this is a good thing. Well, I think if it can help anyone that hears it heal in any way um, through a circumstance in their life, or to realise that you know, th- there's a lot of us suffering silently. Um, and it was just that time to, to bring that out. And after um, you know, 2018 and 19 were some big years going out with a few big artists like you know, Mercules and Obi Trice and Crazy Town and sort of meeting guys that have all got um, you know, deep stories. Yeah, it's, it's a very similar... Mate, all power to you. Uh, I wish we could talk longer. I wanted to talk about the production, uh, you know, 
it's not so heavy because uh, <laughs> obviously you're doing a bit of recording at home. Are you, uh, is, are you doing external uh, stuff out of home as well uh, to to put this production, this album together? The, it's it's all been done in my studio. But, um, I've been getting plays in the play. The production's it. amazing. It's it's coming together. It's, it's a few years of practice. It's because he, it's the ear, ladies and gentlemen. And there's only one of the words. It's, it, <laughs> well, I'm <laughs> Let's fix that. No, uh, this man's brilliant. Um, uh, well done, mate. I, I wish you all the very best with this album, not only for you, but for other people as well, uh, to share that journey, uh, alleviate some of that burden of the pain that they've got. Uh, and this is therapeutic for you too, mate. All power to you. You're a bloody champion. Thanks, Chief. Big Z. Yes. <laughs> Rob Spencer, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Mega Music TV. Now, this particular little segment is a little bit of a treat for me. I absolutely adore 
this little music ensemble that I have gathered with me here. I'm standing with Jen Barrett, a.k.a. Isadora's Dream. Hi, Jen. Hello, Andy. And on the end, we have Satomi. Hi, Satomi. Hello. And on my right, I have Harry. How are you, mate? Hi, how are we doing? Excellent. Now, there's one member missing. That would be Damien on bass. Is that correct? Uh, Damien on guitar, actually. Damien on guitar. I apologise. Yes. Well, we we have a little clip of you performing up there, which is fascinating. I love what you do. I've done a little bit of research on you. I, I actually went to a little bit of trouble to, to look up what it is you're about. Ah. <laughs> and I'm fascinated with the the colours and the, the textures of what you do. I hope this is a compliment. You remind me very much of a cross between Kate Bush and Queen because there's this theatrical sort of drama about your music. So tell me, is this the way that you've always written? Look, certainly I love Kate Bush um, yes. and I like Queen as well. Okay, good. <laughs> um, but I never set out to write like Kate sure, at all. Sure. And I think I get compared to Kate a lot, particularly vocally, uh, because I have a, a sort of natural vibrato that goes on. And yes. Yeah, I do get compared to her a lot, yes. but and I love her music, and yes. I think probably she's infiltrated my writing style. No shame in that. Not at all. I, I, I love her, and I love her theatrics as well. So Right, and yet you've made it your own. You haven't, you know, you're not imitating her, you're not copying her, you're there are influences if that's who you like, but you've made it your own and it's wonderful. I would hope so, yeah. <laughs> so has this approach to songwriting always been prevalent? Is this what you've always done, this style of, um, of music? Pretty much, although I guess I started out as a folk singer, okay. really, yeah. So well, those that influences was, are in there too. I think so, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I grew up with folky parents, so okay. they're musicians, yep. and yes. um, so I think that's that's definitely um, that's where I started, Okay. Um, sort of acoustic guitar and, and songwriting. But uh, as I sort of developed, um, I, I wanted more, as you say, texture yep. to my music, that the folk music couldn't achieve yes uh so and i i guess i i wanted um yeah some uh more depth and a little bit more <laughs> oomph sure i, I guess sure. my music yeah. yeah well look i'm just going to switch to my right harry i love what you're doing up there oh well, thank you there's there's jazz influences there's <laughs> there's some folk in there there's a little bit of rock there's a bit of pop a bit of avant-garde um was this a natural fit or did you find yourself stylistically having to change to suit what the what the project was about? I think it's uh, I think it's been like a, a bit of both because I, I came into the project like a little bit a little bit later. So there were already okay. some established you know there was an established album. Sure. And there was a way that they were playing it, and in that sense, like when we were performing it, I needed to uh, I needed to kind of like adjust the way I was playing. But um, we've recently worked on a new album, and like you know, there's been like a lot of internal dialogue between the members, yes. you know, of the band, and and you know, there's like a little bit more of like what I'm you know what I have going on like kind of in the album now, and and yeah, it's 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 cool to see the interconnection between the various musicians and we, oh, we all come from like you know it's like fabulous. pretty different backgrounds it's so yeah fabulous. I enjoy it um, so you know I, I love to open my songs up to my members if, if, so whoever plays with me brings their own touch to sure, it as, as Harry sure. said so definitely the sound as we've we were Jen Barrett and the Night Shift <laughs> okay. uh, and we're just in the process of rebranding to Isadora's Dream which is Great name. a lot more feminine um, perfect and perhaps perfect a little name. gentler as well sure, sure. <laughs> yeah so um, well, the name Isadora's Dream conjures up um, wow you know, what's this about? It, the, the name is, it doesn't state the obvious. And so consequently, you're going to draw an audience in that are going to sit and watch to hear what it is you're doing because it's fascinating. It'll be interesting to see what sort of audience we sure. attract. Yeah, for well, sure. <laughs> so, so Tommy, yep. I was listening to you playing. I, I, I'm a drummer myself. Oh. I was fascinated to, to hear some of the little interesting little polyrhythms and things you were doing and I heard some interesting double kick drum stuff going on down in there. <laughs> um, <laughs> if, would I be right in saying perhaps bands like Rush have possibly influenced your playing? Oh, Rush, yeah, I, I, I love Lush, but uh, actually my 
um, basically the, my drums is a jazz bass. Right. I was a just trained drummer. So, you know, rather than uh, the rush, I'm listening to John Coltrane and then Charlie Parker wow. and then all sorts of things. So it's a little bit different to the, what yeah. we're playing. So, you know, I have to really like... <laughs> Rock, you know, and then people say that you don't have to do that. <laughs> sure, sure. No, it's fascinating. What, what you, I'm, would love to hear the band with with Damien. Um, so where does Damien's guitar lie in all of this? Is it, what's where's his style? Obviously, um, it suits the band. Yeah, Damien's great. That he's not. It's. I mean, it is more a keyboard based okay. group. Um, because I write on piano, so I, I think the songs are driven by the piano. But Damien's really good at complementing it. So I think sure. often keys and guitar can clash. Um, yes. but yeah, Damien's sort of he's very unassuming. Yes, he's not one of these ego <laughs> you know out there yes. has to, yeah so uh he brings a lot of um like dynamics um texture as well uh he's very influenced by pink floyd okay uh, i think he was in a pink floyd cover band at some sure. stage sure. and so i think no that's that not at all no and it's it's really suited my my music so fantastic now are you the principal songwriter? Uh, is yes. it just uh, yeah. do others? Do these guys lend colours and, and they, facets? I write the songs, yes. so basically it's all my original work, and then I basically give it to the band, and then we all get together and jam it, and then I'm really open to how a song might sound. I don't sort of go right. I've got this song, and it needs to be this, and you've got to play this, and yes. I really like that influence of of other musicians. And you know, each each sort of incarnation of, of band, it just evolves and, yep. and changes, and brings different sounds. Well, it's absolutely fabulous, Isadora's dream. I wish you the utmost because you've got something very unique and very special. Um, can't wait to see where it leads you and some of the festivals. Uh, you, you, to me, you're a festival. You're an event type act, and I can't wait to see what comes of it. So, thank you very much for your time. Well, this is going to be a bit of fun because the next person I'm going to interview, well, I kind of know him intimately. We've been working, to, get away from me. Uh, we've been working together, geez, man, at least 10 years pretty closely and we've done a lot of things. Uh, Zan Nico. Now, I reckon when this guy was born, he came out with a guitar because it, the things he does with the guitar, I, I haven't seen I haven't seen anybody do. How are you, man? Good, mate. Good to see you. Does this Thanks feel so weird? Much. A little bit. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, it's, it's pretty crazy. I'm, I'm getting interviewed by my boss here. It's like it's uh, – boss. I've got the boss. Uh, I, like, I like master. Master. Okay. <laughs> master. Disaster. I mean, it's pretty weird. Yeah. But look, we're going to talk about this album that you've had in the pipeline. Now, you, it, it's an album called Ascension. Uh, just briefly – why did you call it Ascension and what was the inspiration behind this album? Okay, when I was trying to find the title, it just made sense. At the end, it was just right there. Basically, starting from nothing and building it to something. And that is like a journey. So for me, it was like, yeah, it, it was an Ascension. So and it's the same way, like with the, the, the album cover, how I structured it. It's like, you know, it's just me. And then it, it's developing into like a, a another being kind of thing, and that's what kind of the album did. It started from from nothing to to something. On this album, you use uh, people from all o around the world to play. So, can you talk a, a little bit about the music? Yeah. So basically, the, again, um, Todd Zuckerman was the big influence with this. Who's uh, a he dear played, friend. He played drums and sticks. Yes, and he does play <laughs> drums and sticks. Drums. Sorry, oh, there's, they're still going and they're doing really well. So, um, and what he's an incredible drummer. He's he's awesome, oh. but he 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 really gave me the push and the belief to 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 pursue it because oh, really? yeah. So it started off with a couple of tracks I had sent over to him, and then from there it developed to more and more, and then after that I brought in other musos once once we had all the beds down with the drums yep. i then introduced uh 
brought in live bass players and and also Sean, who's also co-producing. Sean Timms. Sean yeah, Timms, who- who's co-producing and and, and engineered the album, so yeah. mixed it. Damien Steele Scott plays Damien, bass. Damien and, uh, and we Damien got any other Jess so- Martin as well. He's another local bass player, yeah. great player as well. Played bass as well on it. Also, we've got Jerry Pantazis, who was a guest drummer on one of the tracks, and and Derek Rohde, who's another drummer who's a, known as an extreme drummer, meaning these big, uh, uh, what's it called, mass. Uh, Blast beats, they call them, and uh, or the fancy double kick stuff. I played on a track as well. I've listened to this, yeah. and I'm I'm not a big fan of the speed. Yeah. And I, actually, I do like some of the prog stuff, but there is a Latino track on here. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, there's um, there's the tribute to El Klug. Yeah, it, and it's like a smooth jazz piece. That's just exquisite. Then there's the tribute. Uh, we lost a, um, a colleague, yeah. uh, Paul Gray, uh, last year to a horrible uh, illness. Uh, and there's a tribute to Paul Gray. Yeah. That's it's a melancholy, uh, beautiful piece. And then uh, there's uh, Lunchroom Hoedown, yeah. which is kind of like a hillbilly country. It sounds like a finger pick and bluegrass thing, but you're playing on this heavy metal guitar. I can't get my head around it. I mean, if I listen to it, I get it. But if I look at it, I'm going, nah, this is impossible. And then there's this stuff that is just out of this world. How do you play that? A lot of practice but, and a lot of craziness as well. So. But then uh, to, to see the drummer yeah. and the bass follow you, this is they're exceptional musicians. Yeah, all the players that, that played on it, you know, I was blessed, you know, for him to come on board and help me out to to produce this basically so so it's a whole team effort regardless i mean although i have written the the songs were already written they they still took another life with all these players that came on yeah. board you know so yeah so but totally the, thankful sorry man but, uh, but the, what the inspiration of play that sort of music i mean obviously this is a style of music that uh, is in you we, yeah. what what actually what was the thing that made you say, that's what I want to do one day as a project of my okay. own love? As you know, like we do a lot of different things, you know, um, cover music, playing other people's music, uh, it, in terms of playing covers as we do. We do also you know, our tribute bands. Our, um, I have played on guests as a player as well, play, uh, as a session musician as well, played on other people's music. Uh, uh, songs and whatnot but for me the the inspiration for this is it's it was an outlet something as a guitar player and i wanted to produce something that i hopefully would be proud of that I can, oh, you should be proud of. well you can never be happy but <laughs> but, but anyway, well you, best actually, you've arranged to... everything and you've yeah. musically produced this although sean has uh, produced the sound and he's done oh yeah of course he's done great brilliant he's done he's done great and but, but, but the artists uh, uh there's some artists that like you look back to 20 30 years ago and say that's the birth of me is there yeah. anything in particular there anyone well, I guess I'm interested in well, this. Well, well, it's yeah, for me. Like I, I, I'm an '80s boy, so it's so kind of thing. I mean, and and you probably spoke to a lot of ninety percent of guitar players or rock guitar players that grew up uh, in my era. And to say you know, Van Halen was pretty much our uh, oh yeah, our first step. I also love Richie Blackmore. So, Rich, actually, Richie Blackmore was my first. In terms of the uh, the showmanship and that that that, 70s, that persona that was 70s. true, so I should go back. To, but I didn't discover Richie Blackmore till the eighties, so so that was the thing. So, and then also Eddie Van Halen at the same time for me, and then from there it just kind of like yeah grew. So you know, and and diverse, you know, from jazz players, you know, Joe Pass, um, huh. and then you uh, and fusion players like Frank and Barley and and. Uh, Joe Sco- uh, Schofield and um, and all you know all those players and then I've got you know all my rock players Lin Bay Malmsteen your John Petrucci Steve Vai Satriani all those all players right, as well we get it. Get so the, there's so the, with, there's a whole a whole field of players out there there's no singer on this album <laughs> why what's the story no well I'm waiting for the right moment. <laughs> yeah, waiting for the right, right for the yeah, wait for the right singer hey <laughs> no, no. Dan man. 
I, I'm really proud of you, mate. No, thank and you I'm, so much. I, I know we work together and we uh, we're close and everything. And yeah. I, it, I don't want it to sound like nepotism, but when people listen to this album, Ascension by San Nico, they're going to find out. Uh, the brilliance and uh, the genius of this thing. It's amazing. I'm just blown away by the quality. Well done, man. Really Thank proud you. of you. means a lot. Thank All you right. so much. Well, Cheers. check it out, guys. Ascension, San Nico. Well, welcome back. And we're here with the beautiful Cheryl Lee. She's hey, beautiful. She's beautiful. But oh, so are you. Oh, well, stop it. <laughs> no, not so much, really. No, a lot. Nah. Yeah. But you, you had uh, fun with the Rustlers. I you did. Them. And um, you work, you kind of like do a little bit of radio with Gary, Gary Burroughs. I do. Don't you? What's was that, that like? Well, great. He's got a great radio voice and it, face. <laughs> well, you got well, a face radio. Don't said that. Well, <laughs> you've got a great radio. I just got that. <laughs> Um, but, but he's got a great knowledge of music. Oh, he has. We've and got a, a show called Rockaholics and he is a mine of information. I'm learning something every yeah, week. And fanatical about the, uh, the Beatles. Beatles yeah, yeah, I know. He well, even talks like Gre- a Beatles. Our own Greg Clark's a bit of a fanatic <laughs> when it comes to the Beatles. It's sad, isn't it? It's great. Oh, they're so old. <laughs> What have the Beatles? What have the Beatles ever done? For what have they? Right? Name me one good song. One. <laughs> You're going to get struck down by lightning, by the I love the Beatles. So you had fun with the Rustlers? I did. I uh, hijacked their rehearsal. Oh yeah, they got a lot of albums out too. Yeah, oh. six or eight albums yep. maybe. Gary writes all the time, so mm. we, well, obviously we're going to see all. Oh about yeah, it. you'll hear yeah. all about it. Well, why don't we go to the to the, um, the interview, the clip, and find out all about it? Play it. Okay. The rustlers are rehearsing. I heard they needed a new tambourinist. I'm sneaking into the rehearsal room. Hi, this is Cheryl Lee, and today we have hijacked the rehearsal space of the rustlers. And these guys are living proof of my theory that rock and roll is the fountain of youth. Welcome, <laughs> rustlers. Hello. This is a band of Johns and Garys. Correct. Yes, and we might start by asking Gary where the name came from and how the rustlers got together mm. and how they went from being a little bit country to being mm. a little bit rock and roll. Well, to tell you the truth, I, I don't exactly know how the, ca- the name came about, but I'm assuming we all put no the, the notes down. Do you know? Do you yeah, remember? The Beatles was taken, so... Oh, is that right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, well, I used to go to uh, the Barber Country Music Festival and Rocky Page used to run it in those days before he passed away, unfortunately, as part of my job at APRA. And so he always used to say, you're always up here and you, you do some comparing and some judging and stuff like that, but you reckon you're a muso and you never play. And I said, I'll tell you what I'll do. Next year I'll write some songs and we'll come up and play some original material. And that's what I did. You know, I had some stuff at home that I'd started and so I wrote I wrote during that, uh, you know, that period. And um, and then I had to find a band to actually go and play the stuff. So that's how the boys all came together, essentially. You know, we had a, we had a couple of other people that started off with us, but didn't stay with us. But this band really, in, in a way, has been together for the whole 20 years now. So you guys hit the ground running in 2001 with the launch of your first album, Broken Pieces. Yes, and that and that was the case of that they'd all been written. We wanted to go and play at the festival and so the guys all got together and we nutted out how the song should sound and what we should do. We 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 managed to get a sound of our own. So we were quite different when we went off to uh, Barma for the first time. And and we've been there, you know, ever since really, except for a few years, because we uh, it was our it was our grounding and we enjoyed going up there. So Gary, you have been with the Brass Carnival, Hijack, the boys of course, who are still playing as well, yeah. and the Moon Dogs. They were, they were a pure rock and roll band, yeah. the Moon Dogs, yeah. And, um, and in all those bands I played drums. Um, and it was, it was really 20 years ago when I decided that, I still wanted to play drums, but I sort of had enough sitting up the back in the dark like most, <laughs> like most drummers are. Now can I get you to introduce us to the rest of the band? Yes. And we can find out a little bit well, about... Well on my right, John Murphy, the lead guitarist. Well, amazing lead guitarist because he's just like George Harrison. You know there's a lot of guitarists just play within the 
scale of what, of what the song is. John always works something out to suit the song. And if you drag that away from the song and he plays it, you know what song it came from. So he's, he's special when he makes the songs um, a Russell song in that way. Excellent. And John, have you been with previous band before? Yes, yes I have. And thank you for saying that, Gary. <laughs> yeah, I started out um, with my first band when I was 17. I met this gentleman and I joined the boys because uh, another fellow, Angie Ages, mm -hmm. led that band. Yep. So I filled in for Angie for, a, I don't know, about three or four years. Then I parted company with the boys and did some other things, did some tertiary study. Then I joined a band called the Flying Yetis. <laughs> and that was my debut as like a lead, like a front guitarist, where I really sort of upped, I improved a lot. But then I did a whole lot of, bunch of other stuff, did some amateur theater. Then the rustlers happened. And I remember you come to my place with a handful of songs. Mm. You played them all to me, you said, got this great idea, I'm gonna go to Barmer and Rocky Page and all that. So we went through the songs and said, yeah, 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 yeah. And then it was like about eight months later, he rang me up and said, you remember all those songs? <laughs> <laughs> You've got a week. <laughs> You've got a week to, to yeah, like, yeah. put some arrangement to them with, in this studio. And that was 20 years ago. Now, Gary with the two R's. Two R's, that's me. Yeah. The drummer. That's right. Yeah. Oh, I've been playing uh, since I was 11 years old and uh, most recently in uh, radio hits with uh, Jock Howlett, who was, uh, who was still in The Boys. Um, went over to the US in 2016, 2017 and played in the Del Shannon show. Played around the Midwest around there. Um, but yeah, got the call from uh, Paddy Kelly, who was our bass guitarist at the time, uh, and bass guitarist with Gary and the Moondogs, and said that Gary was looking for a drum, which I found pretty intimidating. And uh, so I auditioned and somehow got the gig. But uh, it was almost for me, it was as intimidating as Jimi Hendrix saying, <laughs> I'm going to lay back and play piano and I'll watch you play the drums. Uh, play the guitar, rather. So, um, yeah, so I've been with them ever since. <laughs> and of course, we have John By Waters. I yes. won't give you that for me. No, you can hold that. Oh, okay. Gary, the two hours. That's right. Yeah, wonderful job. Yeah. Still, still on yeah. temp services. I'm, I'm going to interview you. Come on, yeah. Hello. It's a lovely shirt. By the way. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Well, it's, the, the warm weather's here, so I thought, why not? Why not? Yeah, why not? Uh, yes, I was asked to sort of fill in for uh, the previous bass player, Derek Manning, who unfortunately passed a couple of years ago. And I was asked to sit in until he got better, but he didn't get better, unfortunately. I've been in a few bands, uh, most notably the Twilights in the 60s. Uh, we were going for about five years, I think. Uh, when we broke up in 69, I came back to Adelaide and uh, I've been in a multitude of bands since then. Mm. Too many to name, uh, Fahrenheit, Celsius 69, Honest John, Formula. Uh, Rocky Brick and the Brickettes. Um, You're naming them, you said that too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's only just a, a, a small sample. Uh, oh. Uh, yeah. Uh, You've been everywhere, man. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I've, I've been playing bass since I was about 15, and um, I actually started on uh, rhythm guitar. But back in the day when I started, everybody, every muso wanted to be either a drummer or a guitarist. Nobody wanted to be a bass player, uh, but I could sense in the band I was in there was no bass player and there was something missing. So I just went out and bought a bass, you know, and uh, I stuck with bass ever since. I love it. Awesome. That's good. Someone in Miami is missing a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> so Gary, you were inducted into the SA Country Hall of Fame back in 2009. Yeah, I can't remember the date, but if you said it is, <laughs> that's, that's right. That's is that the Country went. Music Hall of Fame? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes yeah. And uh, now... And you put your hands in cement. Yeah. In that, in that, in that museum section they've got there. That was, that was very good of them. Yeah. And also then the ANC South Australian Music Hall of Fame yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah, and that probably wasn't so much as a musician. That's because I'd worked for 33 years at APRA where, you know, we, where we collect royalties for songwriters. So, and I, you know, I guess, you know, during those years, it was a difficult job to start with because the hotel industry, for argument's sake, where a lot of bands were playing, um, re regarded me as the bag man standing in the corner and no one wanted to pay an app fee. Collecting the taxes. No, that's right. I was like the music police. So right, it was yeah. quite lonely at a lot of those meetings for a while, but eventually 
eventually we formed a great relationship with the AHA and, and to the fact that eventually we didn't talk about business too much, you know, we just kind of networked and worked together in things that happened and mattered. And one of those was where people were trying to shut down hotels and entertainment venues where they would move in alongside a venue and then say it's too loud and not knowing they were in an entertainment precinct. So we, we brought one of John's mates over, um, Glenn Shorrock, who spoke for the bands and we had a we had a rally that went from Victoria Square down to the Government House and in, in the end, um, with the help of um, a, a lovely lady, Di Laidlaw, who's the Minister for the Arts at the time and was always following music, loved music, um, we changed the legislation to say that it's prior use. So if a hotel now has music and someone tries to move in and stop them, it's difficult to do that because of Ooh, this prior yeah. use Power of the people. Yeah, well exactly. done, you lot. And we also have another um, Hall of Famer. In fact, John, were you the very, very first inductee? I, I certainly was, Cheryl. I was absolute number one, along with Peter Tilbrook from the Masters of Premises. Yeah. But it's a great honour. Yes. Well, congratulations. Well done. Thank you. Now, you guys have got four albums. The first one, as I mentioned, was Broken Pieces in 2001. Correct. In 2006, it was Sad Dark Lies. Yeah. Then 2008. Can't read it. Oh, that was leaving me. Yeah. I don't know if it's my eyesight yeah. or my bad right. It wasn't and called Can't Read It. What was the 2013 it. one called? Born to Love You. Very good. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> these are entirely original songs, so can we hear a little bit about who is writing the songs and where the inspiration for those songs is coming from? Gary's mm -hmm. the main songwriter in the band, and I add one or two songs per album, but he's the main songwriter. The inspiration comes from from my life, really. I really write stories about what's happened in my life, some things that I think about, some things that I've known, some things I see, um, and that's what it's about. Broken <laughs> pieces. Um, you know, we had a bit of bad luck during that period where my daughter was killed when a tree fell on her car up at Harndorf. And I was in Harndorf and I was driving around and that song came to me. And it wasn't necessarily about my daughter Emil. It was really about love and, um, you know, wearing your heart on your sleeve, etc. And I, hadn't, I didn't have a way to, to record it while I was driving, so I thought I rang the studio where we were doing our album and asked them to turn the turn the mic on and I just sang it over the phone and when we got to the studio there it was ready for us to play. Awesome. So it's those sorts of things and I I see the songs that I write, I see the movie in front of me, I watch the movie going in front of my eyes and I just write what I'm seeing and, and then I make it then I make it rhyme so it all comes to it comes at once surprisingly like the tune and the melody mostly. Yeah I just also wanted to thank you guys for all the work that you do for Support Act as well supporting uh, the musicians, the roadies, the lighting technicians, the camera people, the sound guys, yeah. um, who you know might be getting, uh, coming across hard times. And mm. I know you guys are great supporters of Support Act and it's a great cause as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Alrighty, thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank, thank you, you, Cheryl. Thank you.